Medical coding can be confusing, but with some help from this channel, I can help you understand some of those tricky concepts. In this video, we're going to cover modifiers 51 and 59 and how and when you apply them on medical codes. If you're having trouble understanding modifier 51 versus 59 and when you use one versus the other, you're definitely not alone because it's an easy point of confusion for medical coders, for billers, for physicians, for practice managers. So stick around because I'm going to try and simplify this for you and give you a couple of scenarios. Uh, by the way, I am Victoria Moll. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career with my over 15 years of experience in the field. Now first, let's take a look at our definitions of modifier 51 and 59. While I'm grabbing my CPT book, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. It really does help support me and the channel. So in that very front flap of your CPT book, you'll see the short definition for some of those CPT modifiers, 51 being the multiple procedures and 59 being distinct procedural service. Now, way in the back of your books is the appendix, and appendix A is actually the long definition of modifiers. So this might be a good spot in your book to write yourself some notes on how you can kind of tell the difference between the 51 versus the 59. Because honestly, even after reading these long definitions of the 51 versus the 59, it's still not always 100% clear. But let's start with modifier 51. Now, first off, modifier 51 is used to indicate multiple procedures. You'll also notice though on the bottom of your CPT book, there's this little no symbol where it says it's modifier 51 exempt. So some codes, they'll tell you right on here with this symbol, don't use a modifier 51 on them. Add-on codes never get a modifier 51. You can tell which code is an add-on code in the CPT book because add-on codes are the ones that have that little plus symbol at the beginning of the code. So those never get modifier 51. And also the ones that have that little no symbol, that means it's modifier 51 exempt. Those codes never get modifier 51 per the coding definitions. And 51 is for multiple procedures, multiple procedures given by the same provider on the same day. Now here comes the question, why do we even want to track multiple procedures? Well, a lot of insurances like Medicare reduce payments for multiple procedures. So if you think of your CMS 1500 form on that first line there for our CPT codes, Medicare might pay for 100% of the fee schedule for that first procedure. And then that second procedure, they might only pay 50% of the fee schedule. That's why when we're ordering CPT codes, we go from the highest RVU to the lowest RVU because typically that coordinates with the highest expense to the least expensive. But here's the kicker, adding that modifier 51 is basically signaling to the insurance companies, hey, don't forget to pay us less for these procedures. That's why most Medicare contractors like Novitas or Palmetto will tell you don't add the modifier 51 because they'll do it on the back end. You don't need to tell them to pay you less. They, they know to pay you less. But for medical coding certification exam purposes, you're going to need to know how to apply a modifier 51. Fun kind of side note fact, but the AAPC actually used to have a certification called the CPCP, which is the Certified Professional Coder Payer, which had more of those payer specific guidelines tested on it. It was actually archived a few years ago with a couple other credentials, including one that I have. So multiple procedures, and how is this different from our modifier 59? Modifier 59 is used to unbundle different procedures. So it kind of signals to the insurance company, hey, uh, I know it kind of looks like maybe this procedure is included in this bigger procedure, but in this case it's not. So please pay us for both of them. They were separate. A very basic example is if your patient is having any kind of open surgery or even laparoscopic surgery where they're making those little incisions, you have to close up the patient. That's part of the procedure. But we also have medical codes that are for different closures, different repairs, but that's included. If you're going to open the patient, you're going to close the patient back up. But there may be some instances where maybe there was a separate area that had to be repaired. If you look at like a laparoscopic appendectomy of 44970, that patient is going to have openings for putting those ports in to do the surgery. So the closure of those port sites is all included and considered in the reimbursement for that laparoscopic appendectomy code. That's why a complex closure code of the abdomen, a 13101, has an edit saying don't bill this out with that appendectomy code because it's included. But if that patient has a totally separate laceration that we're 
repairing at that same instance. Maybe it's on the, their back. Uh, that modifier 59 signals to the insurance company, hey, this is different. Don't forget to pay us for both of those. I know it kind of looks like maybe these should be together and only get paid under that laparoscopic appendectomy code, but actually pay us for both. These, these were two separate things. I actually have a whole video on modifier 59 and when you should use that versus these X modifiers. So check that one out as well. I'll link it in the description below. So in contrast, that modifier 51 is when we have multiple procedures, but they're not ones that would be typically bundled together, like the closure of a surgery. So our appendectomy patient, let's say their appendix ruptured, they fell to the ground, they dislocated their wrist. So the repair of that dislocated wrist wouldn't be normally considered part of an appendectomy, right? So we're not going to need to unbundle it, but we do need to indicate, hey, there's an additional procedure here. So if we look up the RVUs of those codes, we can see that that lap appy is the higher RVU that's going to go on our line one. And then our line two would be our repair of that dislocated wrist. And we would put the 51 on that, but we wouldn't need to put a 59 because it's not, we're not unbundling it. So I hope this video helped clarify some of those differences for you between the 51 versus the 59. And if it did, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.